What's up, everybody? It is T Wolves twenty sixteen here, bringing you another video. This will be a bit different of a video, and it will be something I'm gonna try out. I'm gonna call this probably something like Hockey Center or something like that, where I just kind of go through because the off season can get kind of boring at points. So I'm probably not gonna make a video after everything that happens, but I will probably do a video like this where I'll probably do plenty of cuts. And I do different stories as the big stories of the week, of the month, unless some big blockbuster trades go through, or unless some big free agent signings go through, then I'll probably do those in a video. So to start with, I will be doing a jersey opening just as very quick. I'm not going to go into any long backstory um, as to how I ended up getting the jersey or anything. Just a good, you know, a good start to this, and I will... Uh, I will be receiving another jersey tomorrow, but it will not be part of it. I won't do an opening because I told you guys I'd, I'd uh, stop doing that. Just because, you know, I, I look at the analytics and I'm just, these aren't, you know, these videos aren't getting views. The, the jersey videos aren't getting views. So I really just didn't see the point in, uh, you know, continuing to do it. But this is actually a team I now have three jerseys of rather than just the uh, two. But I really like this jersey as well. It is a essentially just the Reebok version of the jersey I already have. But it's fine. It is the Carolina Hurricanes jersey with the white trim. And I'm probably, it's the Reebok, obviously. Um, and I'm probably going to get a player on it. I haven't decided which. But that being said, that is all for this. I'm going to throw this jersey on and be right back. Buddy, I'm back and we are rolling. Now on to the first story. The Senators trading Hoffman to the San Jose Sharks. Now this will be part this will probably be about half the show, but I decided I will go a little bit more into this than I will go into the other topics. The Senators trade Mike Hoffman, a center um, Cody Donahue, I think that's how you say it, I'm, and a 2020 fifth rounder. The Senators get Mikel Bodker, a defenseman, Bergman, and a 2026th rounder. Now, I've always found the uh, late round picks, like the 5th, 6th, and 7th round picks, to be quite trivial. So I think it's kind of funny that, you know, you throw those in there because the trade works just fine without them. I think the Senators get maybe a bottom 6 forward. Mike Hoffman is definitely a top 6 forward, and I don't like this trade from the Senator standpoint. Also, because it does sort of feel like this is a move that Ottawa is making to try to keep Mike or is 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 trying they're trying to keep Hoffman er, not Hoffman Carlson they're trying to keep Carlson and you know I do kind of draw some similarities between this idea and the Kawhi Leonard in San Antonio but the difference here is that Kawhi Leonard has vocally has made it quite public that he does not want to be in San Antonio anymore while we only have rumors that Eric Carlson is in San Antonio. This is not where this ends. The Sharks flip Hoffman for probably a better deal than what you know the Senators got from Hoffman. The Senators get Bodker, Bergman, and a six. The Sharks get a 2018 fourth, which, is, which, which they got from Vegas, a 2018 fifth, and a 2019 second. The Panthers get Hoffman and a 2018 seventh. Again, I feel like the seventh is a bit trivial, but oh well. One of my favorite lines from uh, all of this happening is that the Senators lost two trades and they were only a part of one. They lost two trades in a day and they only made one trade. Um, according to um, insiders, I'm not 100% sure who, but there was a, it was a tweet. Uh, according to a tweet, the Ottawa Senators offered the Florida Panthers Mike Hoffman, but they wanted players in return, and because Florida and um, Florida and Ottawa are in the same division, the asking price was a little bit higher. So, but and Florida didn't want to do that, so they sent it to San Jose, and then San Jose flips Hoffman. I think San Jose wins this deal because they got Hoffman, Donahue, a twenty, a twenty twenty fifth. Actually, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. So either way, the Sharks really won this trade. They freed up four million dollars in cap space, which is not, which is, which is great. I, that's an awesome thing to see. 
They added four picks, a 2018 fourth and fifth, a 2019 second, and a 2020 fifth, and they traded away a sixth and a seventh. So the two picks they traded were later rounds than all the tricks, all the trades they got back. Now, wh what happens now? Well, we're going to start with Florida. I think Florida becomes a legitimate playoff contender if they can repeat the success they had this year. With Roberto Luongo getting another year older, James Reimer is looking like he might be the starter coming this season, and he proved that as long as he can stay healthy, he can be a very good starter. The San Jose Sharks get a bunch of draft picks. They get four draft picks, and I think it's really good for them because they are really... Um, because they're not really in a rebuilding mode, but these plethora of draft picks gives them more opportunities to find that diamond in the rough. Because there are a lot of, there are actually a handful of players who are drafted in the fourth, the second, fourth, and fifth rounds that can become gems. Usually, I usually say fifth to seventh rounders are usually not NHL NHLers. They usually don't become NHLers, but that's you know, that's beside the point. That being said. I think the Sharks won the day. I think the Panthers came in a close second and Ottawa finishes in the basement. The only good thing I can say about Ottawa in this entire situation is this does set you up better to keep Carlson. However, I don't I would not be genuinely surprised to see Eric Carlson wearing an Ottawa Senators uniform next season. Um that's for multiple reasons. One the uncertainty of whether or not he will sign with the team he gets traded to is a big factor. Uh, I think if you're not sure whether or not you're going to sign the player, you might be more cautious as to what you give up for that player. I think Ottawa might ask Ottawa's asking price might be a little high. Now, don't get me wrong. Eric Carlson is definitely worth a lot. He's a great young defenseman. And I think he will bring a King's Ransom in return. But I think they are asking for more than that. And that will also lead to him not getting traded. I also think he might, you know, we also have rumors that him and Mel, that Carlson and Melnick are not happy with each other. But can they coexist for one more season? So And then Carlson can then decide where he wants to go in free agency. In other news, I'm, I do want to first apologize for the blanks there. I was trying to find the pause button, and I could not find it for the life of me. In other news, the Islanders signed Barry Trotz. Now, what does this mean? Well, Barry Trotz's contract was in question for a long time um, while he was with Washington. And at times, you know, there were rumors that they were not planning on re-signing him. And then he made on this amazing playoff run and got Washington their first cup. Two weeks later, he is now the New York Islanders head coach. And does this, is this a move to help keep John Tavares? I think it might be. Uh, I think with Barry Trotz behind the bench, he can, you know, and with a couple good moves, uh, essentially mainly keeping Tavares. But a couple more good moves, and I think especially they need goaltending. They need goaltending. Um, if they can get a solid goaltender uh, along with keeping John Tavares, I think they will be pretty well off this season. I don't. I think they'll be a wild card team if they can do all this, but I really don't know. But adding Barry Trotch is huge. Now Washington needs a head coach. And, you know, it's kind of like a who do you get to replace – the coach who led you to your first Stanley Cup. Uh, I have not really done any research as to who the candidates might be, but I do think that um, it will be interesting to see where we go from here. Can Trotz turn around the aisles? We'll just have to wait and see. Our second to last story, or second to last story, or third to last story, that is. The Leafs extend Calvin Picard on a one-year $800,000 contract. Uh, I think with Frederick Anderson and Curtis McElhinney playing the way they did last season, I don't really know if Picard has somewhere to be on this roster. They may be keeping him as a potential third goaltender if, say, Anderson or Ma McElhinney get hurt and so he can come up. They might also be keeping him 
for a sense of not really uh, a sense of uh, trade bait or just kind of that last piece of the puzzle to throw into a trade that makes the trade go through. Um, the new cap was released um, at, and it would be $79.5 million is what uh, cap friendly has reported the cap, the, the cap being. Uh, they also reported the cap basement, but I have since forgotten that number and my phone is not readily available. That being said, the last story we have of the day is according to cap friendly and other inside sources, Leonard is not expected to be offered his qualifying offer by the Buffalo Sabres and should be considered an unrestricted free agent going into here. Now, here's the interesting thing. Of all the things that have happened with Buffalo, Leonard hasn't always been a dark spot. Leonard's actually been a bright spot in Buffalo. I, you know, his stats haven't always shown up, but then again, uh, aside from Ristolainen, he hasn't always, he also hasn't really had the best defense in front of him. That being said, if auto if uh, Buffalo can't get him back, Leonard would be a very nice goaltender to add, whether as a starter or as a backup. Either way, I think Leonard could definitely boost any club's roster, like uh, say New York or say Ottawa, two teams that are in need of goaltending because their goaltending are are either on the wrong side of thirty. Or they're just, you know, they're on a decline and they don't look like they're going to really turn it around any quick. That being said, that will conclude my first edition of Hockey Center. I will probably once I, you know, start doing this a little bit more, I might throw in an animation to start with. I might throw a scroll screen at the bottom to try to um, kind of get you more uh, information, more in-depth facts, or more, maybe just more stories that I don't mention here in the video, um, because not every story is breaking news. That being said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great morning, evening, day, dusk, dawn, whenever you're watching this. I hope you have a great one. I'm really looking forward to what the draft has and what the rest of this offseason has, and I really look forward to doing more videos like this where I can just recap a bunch of things that happened in one video rather than making four or five different videos as to each of these different things because not all these things in my opinion warrant a video. Um, if you want to check anything I have said here I get most of my information from Cat Friendly's Twitter account. Um, that is where I got most of these stories in uh, Sorry, I just had a brain fart. Um, so that being said, thank you so much for watching. Have a great morning, evening, dust on, whenever you're watching this. And we look forward to making more of these videos and maybe, and hopefully, you know, some really, uh, a good off season. That being said, good night. Peace.